All right, this video is going to work some more complex specific heat and um, heat problems. We already did a video earlier where I made a video working problems that were simply Q is equal to MC delta T. Um, this video is going to address the idea that oftentimes the Q of a system is going to be equal to the Q of a surroundings. So in other words, if one thing um, loses heat, then the other thing will have to gain. So it can also be written the other way around that the negative Q of the system is equal to the positive Q of the surroundings. It's just a simple concept that if I have something that loses 20 joules of heat, something else has to gain it. So all of the problems that I have before me deal with metal being put into water. So in all of these, what we're going to assume is that the Q of the water is going to be equal to the negative Q of the metal. If you were in class when we did this, I actually did an example of it. So in my first one it says um, 80 grams of a certain metal at 90 degrees Celsius was, with, was mixed with 100 grams of water. So I'm going to start making myself a chart where I'm going to keep track of information as it's given for each substance. So for example, it says 80 grams of metal. Well, I know that grams measures mass. So I'm going to write down that I have M equals 80.0 grams. And it says that that metal was at 90 degrees Celsius. And if I keep reading for just a minute, it was mixed with water and the final equilibrium temperature of the mixture was 36 degrees Celsius. What that means is that the metal started out at 90 and when it was put into the water ended up being 36. So that means the initial temperature of the metal was 90.0 degrees Celsius and the final temperature was 36.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, then it wants to know the specific heat of the metal. If I go back over to the water side of things, um, I know that it was 100.0 grams of water, so that's M. And it says that water is at 30 degrees Celsius. So the question is, is that TI or TF? Well, again, if it's at 30 degrees Celsius and the final temperature of the mixture was 36, that means 30 is TI and TF of the water is also 36 just like it was for the metal, which makes sense because they should end up at the same place. Well, I can find the specific heat of water. If I go to my reference table, it has three different specific heats for water. If the water is at 30 degrees Celsius, then that's going to be liquid water. So I'm going to take this number right here. So that's 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And that leaves me with the only thing that I don't know for the water is the Q. And I have two things over here I don't know. I cannot just take this piece right here and plug it into my Q is equal to MC delta T formula because I don't have C and I don't have Q. I'm going to have to have everything but one. But what I can do is I can acknowledge that the Q of the water is the negative Q of the metal. And then I can substitute the formula. That makes this MC delta T equal to negative MC delta T. Well, I have all of those things except the C. And if I set it up this way, I can solve for C. So that's going to give me for the water 100.0 grams times 4.18 joules over grams degree Celsius times 36.0 minus 30.0 degrees Celsius equals, don't forget your negative, negative 80.0 grams times the C I want to find times 36.0 minus 90 degrees Celsius. And I'm off the screen. All right. And then basically it's time to solve for C. Now, I have a lot of students who are having trouble with the math of this. Um, if that's the case, then you need to come see me. Um, for the sake of 
uh, some people, I'm, I am going to simplify a little bit. If I multiply all my numbers, that comes out to be 2508. Well, grams cancels and Celsius cancels, so that's that many joules. And then I've got a negative sign there. We'll see what happens with it. Um, I shouldn't have written it already. I've got negative 80 times 36 minus 90. And that comes out to be a positive 4,320. Well, neither one of those units cancel, so that's grams times degrees Celsius times C. Now, in order to solve for C, I need to divide both sides by this. I'm not going to continue to work out this much math the entire way. All right, and then if I do my math, that's 2508 divided by 4320. That gives me 0 0.581 when I round to three sig figs. Has to be three sig figs because these have three sig figs. And my unit is right here, joules over grams degree Celsius. And there's my answer for the metal. And I can even write in here if I want to, the C of the metal. Okay, I'm going to work one more of these. Um, I'm going to skip down to number three on this one. We have discussed in class that there is um, a helpful piece of information here that water has a density of a gram per milliliter or a gram per cubic centimeter. And the reason this is helpful is because I don't have to weigh water. If I measure out 40.0 milliliters, that means it has a mass of 40.0 grams. It's a, it's a one for one ratio. It's a gram per milliliter. It's also a gram per centimeter cubed. And it's gonna come in handy here in this problem. So again, I have metal and it's heated and it's dropped into water. So I'm gonna make myself two columns again, water versus metal. It says the unknown metal has a mass of 23.8 grams and it's heated to 100 degrees Celsius. Now when it says 200 degrees Celsius, that tells me that that 100 degrees, um, I put in there that it's TF, um, Okay, sorry there, I got interrupted for a second. Um, I went ahead and put an F in here and I shouldn't have done it. If I continue reading, it says, it's dropped into water at 24 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 32.5. That's actually going to be my TI. If I can get my white out to work. So it starts out at 100 and then it ends up coming down to a temperature of 32.5 degrees Celsius. Um, it wants to know what the specific heat is. So same way before. Doesn't ever mention the Q, so I don't know that either. Then for the water, there's 50 cubic centimeters of water, which means that the water then is going to have a mass of 50 grams. And the water to start with, its TI is 24.0 degrees Celsius. If the temperature of the system ends up being 32.5, that's the final temperature of the water as well. Well, same way as last time, if I look at my reference table, I can find the specific heat of water, and it's again a liquid, because water at, at 24 degrees Celsius is well above the freezing point. Well, I'm only missing one piece, I can find my Q. So yet again, I'm going off the same idea as before, that the Q of the water is equal to the negative Q of the metal. And again, that's MC delta T is equal to negative MC delta T. So my mass is 50 grams. My specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. My temperature change is 32.5 minus 24 degrees Celsius. That's equal to negative 23.8 grams times the C I want to find times 32.5 minus 100 degrees Celsius. And then it's time for some number crunching. And I've got 50 times 4.18 
times 32.5 minus 24. That's 1776.5. I am doing more work than I would have on my own as far as writing this down. Then that's going to be equal to 23.8 times 32.5 minus 100 and that's a negative so um, if I just do this without the negative it's negative 1606 but a negative of a negative will make it positive 1606.5 gram degree Celsius times C and then when I finish off my math here I get that C is one point and let's see it's gonna have to have three sig figs 1.11 1 .11, um, no I take that back when I do this right here that'll come down to two sig figs so 1.1 1 .1 joules per gram degree Celsius and if you're confused about what I just said right here, 32.5 minus 24.0 is going to leave me with an answer um, of what? 8.5 degrees Celsius. I, I don't have another digit that's going to go here in the front. So that's two sig figs. So we're down to two. So there's my final answer.